Well, today I'm starting a new series I'll call Automotive Mythbusters. Just to teach you some things about cars and systems of cars and stuff that maybe society or rumors or commercials have, or Hollywood programs have made you think differently about. But what I'm telling you is the truth. I guess we'll start from the front of the vehicle, the battery. It absolutely doesn't matter that you store a battery on concrete. It doesn't discharge it or damage it or anything. Concrete's barely conductive and the battery is made out of high impact polyethylene plastic which is very resistant to electricity drain like 99.9999% so there's no electrons being lost through the concrete. When it sits in your vehicle it usually sits on a metal plate and metals almost 100% conductive. It doesn't drain the battery that way. Next is it's not cold that kills batteries, even though it may seem like that because most batteries seem to go dead or bad in the winter time. It's actually heat. The higher the temperatures that a battery is exposed to, or the over output of a possible malfunction from an alternator, heats up a battery. Hot weather, depending on where you live, keeps batteries hot. Well, batteries is a chemical reaction, just like in a human body or something living. The more heat that is is there, the faster the reaction happens. And the chemical reaction in the battery is corrosive. It's acid eating plates which releases electrons. So the battery gets killed during the hot weather or that's when they deteriorate the quickest. But then you don't notice anything's wrong till the output of the battery is reduced just because cold weather reduces the chemical reaction, slows it down. I wish, oh yeah, we do have a bit of snow to prove that. And then you notice on the first cold nights or cold mornings that your car is cranking slowly or your battery may be bad. It wasn't killed by the cold. Actually keeping them stored in a cool place makes them last longer. The colder the better uh, unless they freeze. Next thing that's true, keeping a battery fully charged makes it last a long time. A dead battery goes through a process where the sulfur and the acid and the sulfuric acid attaches itself to the plates. If it's left attached long enough to the plates, the battery becomes sulfated and then the battery can never be properly recharged and even if it could be a one-year-old battery, it could be a permanently bad battery. Also, too low of acid in the battery can kill the battery because when the cells are exposed to air, those little plates in there that are made of lead and stuff, they oxidize and that destroys the cells. An alternator that overcharges by putting out too high a voltage kills the battery by mostly overheating it. Sometimes I've even seen them blow the tops off. Another thing that kills batteries is running them like in a deep cycle process. Draining, dis you know, draining and discharging and then recharging and then discharging again like using them on some sort of motorized vehicle that uses electricity. The battery is not a deep cycle battery. It can't take that many cycles of doing that because every time the battery gives off electrons, the acid has to eat the cells. And then every time it's charged, some of that stuff in the acid is given back to the acid and the cells recover somewhat, but never back to where they were before. So a battery lasts the longest if it's kept in a near, a near charged state, never drawing too much at one time for too long. They do make, like I said, deep cycle and other batteries, but even a deep cycle battery will last a lot longer if you don't drain it very much between charges. Next thing is, you can't get a shock off a battery, see? It's only 12 volts, and DC tends not to like to shock you anyways. AC loves to shock you. The only part of your car you can get a shock off is the spark plugs. That's about 30,000 volts. I guess if you could run two wires to your tongue, you could feel the 12 volts, but that's about it. Sometimes, one day, your battery is perfectly fine and has been all along, and the next day, it seems that your dash lights light up. You know, a few things come on, sort of, but maybe not the headlights. And you turn your key, just nothing happens. Your battery is just, like, flat. Well, what happens is, where a battery can suddenly commit suicide, is there's six cells in there. Each one produces about 2.1 volts, making 12.7 total. And there's a little bridge between every cell. Every cell has a plate of plastic sealing each little acid container from touching the other one. And then above the level of the acid, there's a little lead bridge, two of them for each cell, that jumps everything together to make a series circuit. Well, those little lead bridges sometimes break. 
that's why your battery can suddenly die. Another unusual, unusual phenomenon that makes your battery last less is, for example, joyriding, like at my farm. You can have a few years old battery that was perfectly fine, then in a few weeks of joyriding, with no damage to your battery apparent, your battery's dead, or it discharges quickly. Well, on the bottom of every battery is a sediment tray, and that sits about a half inch below all the cells, and that collects the deteriorated material that falls off the cells as the battery's wearing out. Well, during joyriding, right, Kitty? That, those particles of conductive material bounce around and get in between the cells and the insulators and cause it to like, drain the battery. So, <laughs> joyriding can kill a good battery even if you don't damage it. Or extreme off-road conditions like bouncing around. Aww. Don't ever throw your batteries away when you're done with them. They have acid in them and who knows where that's going to end up. They also have lead, that's poisonous too. They're quite valuable for recycling right now. There's been times when they were worth only $1.50. But right now the average battery is worth $7 to $9 at the scrapyard. So save them. You can even find them behind the parking lots in apartment buildings and stuff if you want to collect them and make extra money like I did when I was a kid. Another thing about batteries is if you let them freeze, which means you leave them in a discharge state so they can freeze, in a discharge state the electrolyte in them, or acid, becomes less dense. The sulfur from the acid moves into the plates in a discharge condition, and the acid becomes more like water, and then it's unlike any freeze, like it is when it's charged, and it freezes. When the battery freezes, it can split the sides and then the acid leaks out. And also when it freezes, it goes to another chemical reaction which makes the battery very poor condition afterwards. Yes, it's true, batteries can explode. They can even self-detonate when no one's bothering them whatsoever. Those little electric bridges I said that's between the cells sometimes can make an arc. And if there's some air mixed in with the hydrogen that's created in batteries, just for no reason at all, just cranking the car, it draws extra current. That bridge arcs and the battery explodes. It can certainly also explode if air is leaking around into the caps or the caps are off while you're attaching a battery charger to it or power and uh, a spark lands inside and ignites the hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, you could go blind. And be careful. Acid when it gets on your skin at first seems like nothing happens. Then later on, in a few minutes, it starts stinging really bad. You better quickly wash it off. Of course, in your eyes, it's instant blinding conditions. When it lands on your clothes, you don't even really notice anything. You could walk around all day and your clothes just seem the same, just have a damp spot. But next time you wash them, <laughs> or the next day when you go to put them on, they'll just fall apart. And there is a bit of new battery technology out there, gel cell batteries. They are improved. Like I said, for off-roading and extreme bouncing around, a gel cell battery is a lot less likely to deteriorate than a lead-acid battery with the liquid acid just sloshing. They have other advantages too. When a battery is low on electrolyte, you're supposed to add distilled water. The reason for that is uh, regular water contains calcium, which is a conductor of electricity, and acid likes to corrode it, and that would weaken the acid and make calcium deposits inside, which is negative to your battery's performance. You're not generally supposed to add acid unless it leaked out, because when the fluid gets low in a battery, it's just water vapor that disappeared from the acid, and the acid actually became more concentrated, so adding distilled water back to it brings the electrolyte back to its specific gravity where it's supposed to be. Hope you learned something. Tomorrow's lesson's on cooling systems and their myths and truths. Keep watching David's Farm. Merry Christmas. Bah humbug. I hate Christmas.